what do these magnificent six-figure books have in common? None of them is big enough to make the top seven comic list of Heritage's upcoming auction. As far as marquee comics go, this is the best auction I've seen in a decade. Let's dig in. At number seven, we have The Brave and the Bold, number 28 from 1960, the first Justice League of America. But this isn't any ordinary copy, it's the single highest graded copy at a nosebleed 9.6. DC lovers will tell you that it wasn't the Avengers or X-Men or even the Fantastic Four that kicked off the superhero teams of the Silver Age. It's this magnificent book. We Golden Age fans know that another superhero team came before that, but I digress. At number six, we have the fifth most valuable comic book in the hobby. I'm talking about Batman Comics number one and a sweet 7.0. This copy is among three in grade, only 15 higher. It features the Joker's first appearance. At number five, we have our gray debut of our favorite green superhero, Incredible Hulk number one at a blistering 9.2. It's a white pager and shares the grade with five others. Only a single 9.4 is graded higher. Whew, let's catch our breath for a minute. I always love to share rarities and this heritage auction has a couple of them. The first is an ultra rare book. In fact, it is the rarest pulp magazine. We're talking about the October 1912 issue of the All Story. Not ringing any bells? Maybe this will jog your memory. It's the first appearance of Tarzan, and there are estimated to be only about 20 copies in existence, making it about four times rarer than action number one. Another rarity is this beautiful copy of Pep Comics 34. Nazi monster dude moments away from injecting this helpless lady with a double prong gas syringe. A classic cover for sure with only 37 copies on census. Back to the main list. At number four, the grade is so high we may need to grab oxygen masks. It's Amazing Spider-Man number one at a 9.8. It's the Curator Pedigree copy, and it's tied with one other at the top of the mountain. Heritage says this is the first time they've auctioned off a 9.8. I certainly can't remember one coming to market. By contrast, there are four highest graded copies of AF-15s at a 9.6. For Spider-Man fans, the ASM-1 9.8 may be the most exclusive Silver Age mega key. If this were the best book, I would say it's one hell of an auction but it goes onwards and upwards from here. Are you a Wonder Woman fan? If so, here's your chance to grab the single highest copy of her first appearance in All-Star number eight. This exact book sold back in June 2022 for 1.6 million. Will it sell for more or less? We'll see. Now it's time for the number two book. And if you're not a subscriber, I wanna do my best to provide some subscriber worthy value right here. It's a great looking copy of Superman number one at a 7.0. It will likely fetch the most of this auction about $2 million. You might groan, a 7.0, that's not very impressive. I beg to differ. High grade Superman ones are incredibly rare. How rare are they? Let's dive in. Recall the Bat 1 7.0 we saw earlier in the list. 15 copies are graded higher. For Soup 1, merely three blue label books are graded higher. And if we compare soups to the other top five Golden Age books, you can see how tough high grade copies are. Soups only has five books that grade out at a 7.0 or higher. That's fewer than Action 1, Tech 27, or Marvel Comics number one. Further, all these books feature at least one copy that grades out at a 9.0 or higher, except Superman 1, which currently maxes out at an 8.5. Folks, that's why a Soups 1 at a 7.0 is so special. In case you were wondering if we bring in the other top 10 Golden Age books, you can see they are also incredibly rare in high grade, with the exception of Cap 1, which has 29 copies. I mean, sheesh, look at Tech 31. One copy in a 7.0 and one in an 8.0. That's it. I mean, wow. I've added up all top 10 Golden Age books at a 7.0 or higher, and there are 86 total copies. Keep that number in mind, 86. For fun, let's look at the top 10 Silver Age books in the same grade range for comparison. Without even looking at the exact numbers, you can see how many more cells are populated. Check out X-Men number one at just a 7.0, just that single grade. That's more copies in that one grade than all the high grade copies of our Golden Age books combined. Zooming out, there are nearly 2,000 Silver Age top 10 books at a 7.0 or higher versus 86. 
we'd have to limit ourselves to 9.4 books or higher in the Silver Age to have roughly similar numbers to the Golden Age books. Let's get back to the main list, shall we? At number one, this book will likely sell for a little bit less than the soup number one. But when I spotted it, I was dumbfounded. I mean, my mouth was wide open for about 20 seconds and then I think I uh, took a tissue and took the drool off a bit. At first, I thought it might be some kind of weird reprint, but when I looked closer, I realized it was the real McCoy. It's this copy of Showcase number four. It's the grade that's a real shocker and I'll get to that in just a moment. Showcase number four is the first appearance of the Silver Age Flash. It's the fifth most valuable Silver Age comic according to Overstreet. Further, it's got to be one of the top five most important books in the hobby. It reintroduced superheroes after they almost died in the waning years of the Golden Age. In fact, it's often the book used to mark the beginning of the Silver Age. Yep, it is a 9.6. For those eagle-eyed viewers, you may have noticed that there was one Silver Age book that was much, much harder to get in high grade than any of the others. It's showcase number four and a 9.6 represents the single best copy of the book that launched the Silver Age. Indeed, for a Silver Age book, showcase number four is quite scarce, but is it rare enough to make the top 10 list of rarest Silver Age books? To find out the answer, check out this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around real soon.